In today's video, we are making the antique tiles block. Hi, I'm Tom and I am the Colourblind Quilter and we are on video 9 of the Behind the Block series. I cannot quite believe that we're almost two thirds of the way through. In today's video, this is the antique tile block and this is a beautiful block that reminds me of the grand entranceways and the townhouses in Edinburgh, of these tiles laid on the floor with such beautiful geometric patterns and colours. This looks complicated, but it's actually only made up of two different types of blocks. So it's so simple to make and it builds on all the techniques that we've previously worked on in the previous eight blocks. As a reminder there is a free worksheet in the description below that you can download and within that you'll find all the fabric bits that you need and step-by-step -step instructions with diagrams as well as information to make this block in three different sizes and then there's a second free worksheet that has all the fabric requirements and all the cutting instructions for you to make the entire sampler quilt. There's also a link to pre-quilt that will allow you to color the sampler quilt any way that you like and make it your own and you can click that link in the description below to play with it. If you've missed any of the videos in this series so far I will put a link in the corner to the playlist so that you can catch up and sew along with us. And don't forget to stick around to the end of this video because I am going to be showing you some example quilts that you can make using this block. To make this block you will need in fabric B the blue fabric you will need one four and a half inch square for the center, one two and a half inch by eighteen and a quarter inch strip and one two and a half inch by ten and a quarter inch strip. From fabric C the green fabric you will need one two and a half inch by ten and a quarter inch strip and four two and a half inch by four and a half inch strips and from the background fabric which I'm using white you will need one two and a half inch by 18 and a quarter inch strip. So when you look closely at this block you will notice that this is actually a nine patch that's made up of individual segments. In the corner you will notice similarities to the log cabin and the bento block and then the middle column is just simply just strips. When it comes to the strips I have allowed a little bit extra fabric to allow you to square up the edges so you get a good straight edge for cutting your segments out and all the instructions for pressing the seams so they nest beautifully are included in the worksheet. So let's take a look at how to make the antique tile block. We begin with the 18 and a quarter inch by two and a half inch strips in fabric B and the background placed right sides together and then joining with a careful quarter inch seam. You can pin these if you like but I'm just adjusting as I go. Once joined, we're going to set that seam and then we're going to press it towards the blue fabric. So gently roll it back and finger press to get the seam nice and open and then run your iron along it, being careful not to swoosh. You can use a ruler to check if your strip is straight after ironing if you like. Now with the cutting board, you're going to line up with the lines on your mat and then you're going to cut just a tiny little bit of the edge to square it up and then you're gonna cut four four and a half inch segment and you want to make sure that you're lining the ruler with the top and the bottom and the side of the block as well as with the middle seam to ensure that it's nice and straight and you can see that in the close up here all the lines are lining up. And that completes the first part of this block. Next we're going to take the two and a half inch by ten and a quarter inch fabrics B and C strips and place those right sides together and at the sewing machine we're going to join those with a careful quarter inch seam. And then at the pressing mat we're going to set that seam and then we're going to gently roll it back and press towards the blue fabric, gently finger pressing to open the seam first. Now the same as the first step on the cutting mat, line it up with the lines and then square up the edge taking just a tiny little bit off and then lining up all the lines on your ruler with the top, bottom, side and middle seam of the strip you're going to cut four two and a half inch strips. And you can see just a tiny little bit of fabric is left over. Next at the sewing machine take a two and a half inch by four and a half inch fabric C strip and you're going to place it right sides together and attach it to this block joining with a careful quarter inch seam and chain piecing all four of these through by just butting them up against each other. I am using a leader as always to catch any tension issues with my sewing machine and you can pin these if you like but I am adjusting as I go. At the pressing mat you'll want to press the seam towards the blue fabric. And then when you're finished you'll end up with a four and a half inch square block and you'll have four of those. 
Now we're going to lay the block segments out on the mat so we can see where they go. Just arrange as you see them on screen. All the seams are pressed in the right direction so that they will all nest where required. Place the first column right sides together and take it to the sewing machine where you are going to join these with a quarter inch seam. Chain piece them through just butting them up against each other as you finish the previous piece and of course feel free to pin if you like. At the pressing mat, we are going to press the top and bottom rows to the left and we are going to press the middle row seam to the right. A helpful tip for pressing is to put the block on top that is the direction that you want the seam to go. So in the middle, I place the blue center square on top and then that means the seam goes towards that when I roll it back. Now I place the final column right sides together with those three bits and back to the sewing machine where again we join these with a careful quarter and seam. You may pin these if you like, but I am just adjusting them as I go. Be careful of any seams underneath that they don't get caught on your stitch plate. At the pressing mat this time we are pressing the top and bottom rows to the right and we are pressing the middle row to the left and this will ensure that these seams nest on each of these rows. Place them back on the board, row one and row two, right sides together, making sure that those seams nest, pin is required, and then join with a careful quarter inch seam. And at the pressing board, we want the seam to go to the top of the block, so set the seam and then roll back and press it towards the top of the block. And then take the third row, place it right sides together and then make sure your seams are nesting and again at the sewing machine join it with that careful quarter inch seam making sure that the seams are nesting, making sure they're not getting pushed in the wrong direction, pin if you like and then just sew it on through. And then finally at the pressing mat we are going to press that final seam towards the bottom of the block, make sure it's nice and flat, and give the block a good press and that is your antique tiles. And that was the antique tile block. Simple to make, but really beautiful, stunning block. If you wanted to play with the colors and the placement in this block, you can very easily and quickly create lots of secondary interesting patterns and movements through a quilt. So let's take a look at a couple of quilts made using this block and see what's possible. So in example one, this is the block just as it is, and these are placed in rows and columns together. And what you can see is that the outer corners of the block merge together to create that cross in the center. It gives a very uniform and symmetrical look. It's very pleasing on the eye. I have added a thin blue border around the outside of this quilt to help the design float. It's very blocky. It kind of reminds me of a maybe a computer game, a bit pixelated, but I do like how it forms the secondary patterns of the squares and crosses. I think it's very nice and it's very easy and simple to make. And our second example is the same layout, but this time I have inserted thin blue sashing strips in between each block. And I have left some lines on so you can just see where some of the sashing is. So it's still very symmetrical and very pleasing in the eye, but it does create some separation between the blocks so you can see more of the antique tile block. Again, so there is some secondary patterns coming out here and the spaces that the blue fabric fills, the kind of negative space creates shapes within the pattern, which I do really like as well. A second variation of example two would be to add a green cornerstone on the sashing. And this time it creates some diagonal movement through the quilt by linking up green sections to create joins. I do like how again it creates these kind of pluses and crosses and squares in the secondary patterns. I think it's very nice. I have left some outlines in this design just so that your eye can pick out the various sections. And then finally, the second variation of that last one, this time all we've done is we've replaced the centre square with a red square. I've kept the green cornerstones and I've kept the blue sashing through the block. 
and I think this looks very nice. The red adds another layer of visual interest to the block, but we still have all the lovely geometric patterns and everything going on. Now with the blue border, you could take this actually a step further. Here I've just kept it a simple plain blue border, but you could actually insert cornerstones into the four corners of the coat and then at the end of each sashing beside the green section and that would create a little bit more interest and it would also carry the pattern on. I find this very effective, very interesting to look at and I can see this with lots of nice swirling circular quilting on it to really create some really interesting looks and movement. So that's it for today's video. That is the antique tile block and some of the beautiful quilt examples that you can make with this. Don't forget that you can get the two free worksheets with all the information you need to make the block and all the information you need to make the sampler quilt in the description below. There's also a link to pre-quilt that you can use to color your sampler quilt and make it your own. In the next video, which is number 10 in the series, I'm gonna be showing you how to make a woven block. And this is a really clever block that gives you the effect of woven fabric but without all the difficult piecing. If you found this video helpful, please do consider giving it a thumbs up. And if you want to get notified when the next video in the series is released, please take a moment to subscribe and click the bell so you'll get notified. There are just three blocks left to make in this sampler quilt, so I really hope you're following along. Please share your progress on Instagram using the hashtag BTBSeason1 and tag me at the Colorblind Quilter so that I can follow along and see all your lovely blocks. So until next time, take care.